Hey guys, what's up, what's going on, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's Saturday, um, kind of doing the self-quarantine for the weekend. I have one of those essential jobs for the highway department that I have to be at as of right now. Um, we are still going into work, we're doing the temperature taking uh, before we go in, and before we punch in for the day. If we have a temperature elevated at all, we are to go home and not to return. Um, things are getting worse and um, it, it just, it's, it's going to be a while. Uh, I, I look and I watch the news and I see a lot of young people still doing the spring break thing on the beaches. You know, it, it starts with you guys, not, okay, it starts with them as a whole. You know, I know I was young once and I like to party, but right now it's not about partying. It's about basically survival. Um, and I use that term loosely, survival in the fact of let's keep us all healthy, let's keep us all safe. So, you know, I wish that, uh, and I hope that, you know, some of you guys that see this that are the younger generation will take it serious and know that this is a very serious situation that we're going through right now. And I just want everybody, each and every one of you that may see this video, that watches me on an every time I upload basis to survive and be happy and be healthy and have another day to spend with your family. So just think about that and um, practice everything that they're, they're saying. Wash your hands, 20 seconds, hand sanitizer. Um, check your temperature here in our house. We're checking our temperature every single day and then I'm checking it when I go to work too. So just to stay healthy, stay the biggest thing is stay healthy. Um, be smart. Use your head. Use the social distancing that they're talking that they're talking about. Um, we have actually suspended shooting. Uh, you guys know I shoot on Sunday mornings. Uh, that you watch that watch the channel regularly. Uh, we shoot Sunday mornings um, out at, out at Lima Sabers Shooting Academy, and we are have the option we can finish this season uh they're going to hand out targets so uh it's kind of what they're thinking really they're going to hand out targets we can go out and shoot on our own and then email our scores in and, and you know be and do it that way i don't know that i'm even going to do that i may just say the heck with it and just be done for the season i just have not decided what i'm going to do yet anyway all right moving on from there um i just wanted to get that out uh, i i just i don't know I could go on and on about it, but it just, uh, hopefully if one person sees it and it helps that one person, then perfect. I've been working out here for a little bit this morning, worked a little bit last night. I did get most of the four-wheeler tore down. Um, actually, my son did a lot of this on his own. He's 14 years old. I want him to start learning and grasping the mechanical ability or, you know, the mechanical end of things to have him have a mechanical ability like I have. Um, I still have a lot to learn, but I'm glad that he's taking the steps uh, on his own to be able to tear things down. One of the things that I did find uh, when I was tearing things down, I noticed that there was some electrical tape and somebody has screwed with this. You can see they've extended the wires. I don't know if they had an issue or what the deal was, um, but here's the original three up here. Uh, and they have done a pretty shitty job really at uh, splicing all these together. Um, I may try and find a, a used wiring harness, haven't decided yet, or just, you know, take a lot of these splices out, do it the right way, um, and, and kind of go from there. But uh, just about ready to pull the engine. Got to do the swing arm bolt yet. Got to get the four-wheeler supported up in this area here. Uh, because when I take that out, uh, the engine has a mount that the swing arm goes through right through here. So we're going to have to take and actually the swing arm is going to come off, just set it on the ground. And then we're going to have to support the back of the four-wheeler about right in here someplace. It should be fine. So um, just about ready to pull that engine. And then uh, I don't know what we're going to do as far as splitting the cases. The one side, I think it's a, the right side case will come off. It's the left side, I believe it's pressed in and they have a puller or I can try and find a press and press it out. So just kind of thinking, deciding what to do. I've never, ever, ever had uh, those apart like that. Um, 
I, I guess put it back together the way it came apart and hopefully things should be fine. So uh, I do have Brent um, on on reserve. <laughs> Uh, we were supposed to go out to his shop and get this done, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Been working also on getting the vacuum, uh, this new vacuum system, or you new, okay, brand used vacuum system mounted on the new Excalibur. Uh, this is the new mower that I told you guys about. This is a uh, 2017 Excalibur uh, from Dixie Chopper. It has, it's a leftover 2017. It has 1.3 hours on it, so uh, not very many hours at all. So what we're working on is getting, uh, I've got the engine mounted um, right there, as you can see, and then been working on the framework on the back. I ordered some stuff from uh, Lawn Vac Services, which is the dealer for PECO or the uh, the manufacturer for the PECO product over there. Um, I purchased this bracket right here. Uh, this is something that I can't make. So I went ahead and purchased it. And then I just got my own hardware from the hardware store. And then I also purchased this bracket here and then this spacer that goes in here. Um, as you can see, that's sandwiched in there. Uh, that So far, those are the only pieces that I've purchased. Um, these were the legs that were on uh, this piece here as I showed you in that last video. So uh, what I have done is I've cut those off of the bottom right there. And then I cut these mounts out of uh, the centers of those pieces to be able to mount this on uh, to get that welded back into place. Uh, what I ran into was that... It's not quite wide enough for this to sit on there. It sits right on the edge um, right there, so I don't like that. So I've got a couple of pieces of angle iron that I have cut, and I'm gonna weld those to the sides, and then uh, that way this piece will go on here, and then I can weld it on essentially just like that. So it gives it a nice flat platform for it to sit, be sit on and be welded. All right, I took one side off and I got it tacked on there. And this is what I'm thinking of is by having this piece here, it gives it a nice platform. Um, I have my makeshift weld table over there. I do not have, um, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. Anyway, I have a piece of flat stock that I have. It's uh, eighth inch. And I put that on a saw horse, and then I have a place my weld clamp. I have an edge here I can clamp to. Um, this is my fixture table for the time being. So I will leave that at that. As you guys know in that one tool video, I did have some fixture clamps in there uh, that I had showed you that I picked up. So um, if you guys can figure it out, let me know. Also, I saw these laying back here, so I want to say something to you. This is that blow gun that I picked up from Harbor Freight. Do not buy it. This is going back. Um, I know it was only five bucks, but constantly having to tighten it up within this gun here. It does not stay tight with that threading in there like that. All it does is come loose all the time. And every time I had to tighten it up, I had to go just a little bit more to the point to where it was tight and clear up and this was pointing the opposite direction of my trigger. So. Uh, that's going back and I'm going to try and find a good one whether I find one on Amazon or if I find one locally here at an automotive store or something like that. that that's what I'm going to do. That right there, junk. So um, anyway, this is what I'm thinking. Um, putting that on there like that. In an ideal world, I was going to go in this morning, come down here about an inch and a half and uh, take them to work and put them in a brake press and just bend this over a 90. Um, that way I wouldn't have had to weld this on there at all. It's not really a big deal. It's just an extra step that I'm going to have to go through because I cannot go into work this morning because they have people in there uh, cleaning and sanitizing the building um, because of the COVID-19. So um, just got to make do with what I have. So this is going to work. Um, as you can see, I do have this piece tacked on there. Uh, I'm not going to tack it here. I'm not going to weld it at all on this seam right here because this is going to sit up here like this. So at that point in time is when I'll weld that edge right there. And then you can see everything will be welded up underneath along that edge right there.
So I'm going to go ahead and get these brackets made and then I'll catch back up with you. I don't want to do any welding anymore on camera because of, like I've said in the past, I've already screwed up one camera by welding uh, when I made that uh, transmission jack and uh, I don't want to screw up any more cameras. I don't have a uh, lens filter to be able to put on there to, uh, to show you guys the welding. All right, as you can see, I have everything welded on solid. I've got the plate welded to the angle iron, then the angle iron welded to the uh, two inch square tubing. And then I also have the plate welded to the back edge of that. That's what I was talking about. It's just a little bit too close um, to the edge there. It wasn't going to sit properly the way I wanted it to. So I went ahead and uh, put that angle on there, basically kind of as a gusset, just kind of on the reverse side. Um, it just, I didn't, wasn't able to make it to work, like I said, to be able to uh, bend my 90 in my plate itself. So everything looks pretty good. Let it cool off, put a little bit of paint on it. I don't have time, nor do I have a lathe to be able to spin these down. You can see these are just some one inch solid stock. I don't know how far it goes in there but you can see they have it welded around the edge from the factory but just the amount of times that's been turned on there is starting to wear on that pin so this year i'm just going to take and put some uh try and fill that in a little bit with a little bit of wire on both sides and kind of call it good so uh it's a little smoky in here um that's pretty much all i have today i just kind of wanted to update you where i'm at or just show you what i've got going on on a day-by-day -day basis uh, as we get closer and closer to possibly a uh, full-on quarantine to home um, or self quarantine Right now we're just self quarantine but if, if uh, Governor DeWine decides to make a mandate for a, uh, a quarantine, um, I'm going to be out here quite a bit. So I'll bring you uh, daily videos as far as what I've got going on as a quarantine. So uh, check the shipping um, tracking on the pump. Uh, it went to North Dakota. Um, it should be delivered Monday, and then hopefully they can get on that and get that built. I do have more work to do on the uh, the second gen. I'm going to tear some more stuff apart on it, but just it's a little bit cold outside, and I don't feel like being out there. So, um, turning my attention to stuff that I can do in the garage, and uh, have a little fun in here while we're all self quarantined. So, guys, if you don't mind, hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already done so. And uh, stay healthy, stay safe. We'll talk to you guys later on.